this is another mathematical finance lecture and it's on the efficient frontier. Now I'm having some difficulty explaining this but the way I see it is it's the most efficient way of distributing your stocks. So how much you're going to spend on each stock. So let's say we've got we have our minimum variance line and then we also have a risk-free asset, so that will just be a straight line. So if we plot a point on that uh, using the standard deviation and the mean, we say that that point dominates another point if, so we've got a uh, standard deviation uh, 1 and mean 1, uh, 2 and 2, we say that the one dominates another if the sigma 1 is less than or equal to sigma 2 and uh, mu 1 is greater than or equal to mu 2. So it either has less than less risk and more return. So and we say it strictly dominates if we can remove one of these equals. So either this one or this one. So it strictly dominates if the risk is less and the return is either the same or more or the risk is either the same or less and the return is greater so we say it's strict so it's a better scenario and we find we say it's the efficient por uh, frontier if there is no portfolio that dominates the one you've got so it's the best the best way to put your money in there right we say it's attainable, which is another definition, uh, if the portfolio V, if we have sigma V, uh, mu V is equal sigma mu. So we already know what's going to happen. Uh, we've seen this kind of scenario before, so it's attainable. We can work out everything. Right. Now, now that we've found, uh, now that we know uh, dominates and strictly dominates, uh, the weights of how much we're going to distribute that that's defined here. So it has to satisfy this equation, which is gamma times w. So we've got the ga gamma in the mu here. Gamma times the weights uh, vector times the covariance matrix is equal to m minus mu times u. And the m is the vector of an expected return and this is in, I think, the last finance video. And U is the unit vector and the covariance matrix. Well, that's in the last video as well. I suggest checking that if you know what they are. Right. <coughs> First, I'm going to define this one, which is the mu. So this is M times the inverse of covariance times M transpose, transposed minus uh, mu V times the unit vector transposed. And it's the same underneath, but we're just swapping m for u. <coughs> the gamma function, we use this uh, mu we found. So we have m minus mu times u. And once you've found this, you can also use this up here as well. So that's worth doing. Uh, times covariance inverse times the unit vector transpose. Right, we've got an example coming up. As in now. And... In the questions, because it can be quite long to do, they usually give you this much. So they'll give you the mu v as, well, we've given it here as 3. We've given our m as 1, 2, and 3. And we've got c in a uh, covariance inverse as this matrix here, which I hope you can see. Now, what we want to do is we want to find the most efficient way. But in order to do that, we want to just find the mu and the gamma. So the first thing we're going to do is, I'll talk you up through what we're going to do. We're going to find this, this, this first here, so we can use this on the top and the bottom. Then we're just going to multiply this by the matrix <coughs> and the vector to give us our mu. And then because we found our mu, we'll calculate this. And that's, that's what we'll do. So, first we do the m times mu v times u, we've got all the components here, which gives us minus 2, minus 1, 0. Uh, we're going to put that into our formula 
for mu, which was m times c inverse times this transpose. So instead of writing just transpose here, I've just done it normally, just, just to save myself a bit of space. And underneath, we're just multiplying by u instead. Multiply this out, multiply this out, using a matrix multiplier or something. I'll give a link below to the one I use. Uh, or you can work it out. I suppose in an exam they will give you something. They'll either give you a lot of marks or they'll give you a 2x2 two two that you can work out yourself. So this goes to here. To here which gives us 79 over 49 for our mu. <coughs> now we just want to calculate the gamma. So it's not that bad, it's just lots of calculation. I've left out this. This is just the m minus mu times u, which gives us minus 30 over 49, 19 over 49, and 68 over 49. Times the c inverse, times the unit vector, which carry on like this, give you the value minus 7. Now, getting on from this point, the matrix I chose, it's all right to get up to this point, because we get a nice value of minus 7, which is quite nice. But then, if you were just to find the covariance on its own, it's a horrible matrix, which is like this. But, like I said before, it just needs to satisfy this. So we've got all the components here, apart from the, the weight vector, which is what we want. So we have minus 7, the gamma, from here, multiplied by the weight vector. We know there's 3, because it's a 3 by 3. Um, put this C in, I just use the uh, online matrix multiplier to find the inverse of the inverse. Uh, and this is equal to what we've got here, uh, this part, but we used that in here, didn't we? So we've already calculated that. Then if you multiply this by this, and this minus 7, you'll get three simultaneous equations for your W1, W2, W3, which gives the values here. And if you do this, follow it through, might take a while, uh, you'll get weight vectors of W1 is 132 over 343. W2 is minus 264 over 343, and W3 is 475 over 343. But I haven't found any equations that ask you to actually carry on and find this yet. But I imagine in the exam there might be a 2x2 two two matrix, so it'll be a lot easier. I hope that made sense.